The Buddha is open-minded about other teachings and do not accuse them of willful deceit. There are good teachings in other religions as well. To understand the Dhamma, no blind faith is needed. The Dharma is built on a bedrock of facts and realizations. The truths that are expounded can be tested and verified by one's personal experience. The Buddha does not examine his own teachings from the standard that he has set up for us. Even his doctrines are not excluded from critical investigation. He said, one must not accept my teachings out of reverence, but first try them as a goldsmith tests the purity of gold by putting it into the fire. Hence, to practice in our own experience, we are able to verify the truth of the Buddhist teachings. As a person begins to make progress in his practice, he can substantiate these teachings. He can substantiate these truths by his personal experiences. Knowledge and understanding are needed to walk the path, not blind faith. There are similarities in ideals and general principles between Buddhism and science. Both advocate free inquiry and freedom from authoritarian dogma. In the parable of the poison arrow, the Buddha discouraged metaphysical speculation into issues that do not address the basic question of life. What causes life to be unsatisfactory? And what to do about it to gain happiness? Hence, the Buddha considered questions such as the origin and the end of the universe to be a wilderness of opinions. In a parable, he said that if a man is shot with a poison arrow, the first thing to do is to remove the arrow and find the antidote as soon as possible. He should not go into speculative thinking about who shot the arrow, what the bow and arrow are made of, and other side issues. The parable is a teaching on being practical in dealing with the situation at hand. Endless metaphysical speculation do not bring us closer to the truth. Self-reliance Buddhism asks us to realize that we make our own destiny. The Buddha said that our griefs, misfortunes and anxieties spring from our tainted hearts and minds. We like to think that our fate has been predetermined or perhaps our suffering arises without cause. These are wrong views. We are the result of actions performed in the past. As a result of wrong views and delusion, we suffer from the consequences of our past negative deeds. If we are responsible for our suffering, it is within our power to put an end to it. The Buddha explains very clearly that good and bad deeds that we perform have their resultant effects. Good deeds yield good results, while bad deeds yield bad results. Through our own effort of leading a moral life and mental purification, we can put an end to suffering. There is a Zen story where a teacher who needed to ease himself at the toilet had asked his student to do that for him. Now, no matter how much respect the student had for his teacher, there's no way that he could perform that on behalf of his teacher. In the same manner, when we harbor bad thoughts rooted in bad motivations, no one can get rid of those thoughts and motivations, only ourselves. It is the work we are responsible for, and we must do the work of restraining and removing negative thoughts. Only with the right effort can we eradicate bad thoughts. In the same manner, to get more happiness, we need to cultivate wholesome qualities ourselves. It is not a task that someone else could do for us. A quotation from the Dhammapada says, You yourself should walk the path. Buddhas merely show the way. Everyone seeks to gain happiness. In his desperate search, he places hopes and dreams on his family, friends, success in business, wealth, 
pleasure and beauty. Yet, does it get perfect happiness from them? The problem with external sources of happiness is that they are so changeable. One day he may receive gain, fame, praises and happiness, but the next day may come the opposite. No one can guarantee against failure and disappointment. Instead of finding happiness from external conditions, he should look within. Each of us has a vast potential for peace and happiness if we only know how to tap it. By looking inside, we can work our way towards deliverance. The Buddha taught us a straight, clear path to attain peace. Addressing some monks, the Buddha said, Just as the mighty ocean is of one flavor, the flavor of salt, even so, this Dharma is of one flavor, the flavor of deliverance. <laughs>